some Africans have a hard time when they do move because now they take on the identity of being a black person mm -hmm. and they now experience yeah, racism. Welcome back to my channel guys. If you have not subscribed yet, then please make sure that you click the subscribe button below and join the revolution. As you can see, I'm not sitting alone. I'm sitting with food and a human being. Human being, who are you? Hi guys, my name is Obangai Sarah. I am a YouTuber as well. Um, please do also check out my channel. It's Obangai Sarah. Um, I'm yeah, I don't know what else to say. I, I'm, like, this is the first She's time. She's also I'm a doing psychopath. This. Certified <gasps> wow, psychopath, guys. Wow, wow. We did a video on her channel, so you'll you'll see the truth there. Certified psychopath, but we like them that way. Huh. Yes, huh. yes, we really do. So, guys, today we're gonna be doing a mukbang, and we're gonna be eating Nando's, which we got um as part of the the person in front of me decides what we're eating challenge, which we did on her channel. So check it out as well. Yes. And today we're gonna be talking about life as a international student, life as a foreigner in another country. As you guys know, I'm studying um in America. I'm studying accounting, and she is studying law right here in South Africa, and she's originally from Zimbabwe. Yep. So let's hop into it. So the first thing that I want us to talk about is the education, um, the level of education and the teaching styles. Did you have a hard time coming from Zimbabwe to South Africa with maybe the teaching style or the level of education? Was it more difficult for you or what? No, I, I feel like it was very easy to adjust because I feel like you're coming from high school and going into university. I think what was difficult is the um, having to be accountable for yourself and mm. knowing that, you know what, I need to study now. Mm. I need to whatever. You need to study for an exam. Mm. You can't just wing it. What about for you? Um, I, I thought going to America, because you know how we always hear things about our education, mm -hmm. how it's really bad and stuff, except for Zimbabwe. I know, they, they, the, from what I know, Zimbabwe has really high education um but going from here to to america i thought it's gonna be more difficult i'm not gonna understand they do extra 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 level math like you know what i mean but honestly i i cannot make this stuff up and i think it's just god's grace mm -hmm. i was never okay not that i was never i was not a real a student mm -hmm. i got a's yes i got high 70s 80s maybe a 90 that's where i was that's pretty it's not mediocre it's just one level above mediocre mm -hmm. That's who I was. And then I was like, damn, I'm on an academic scholarship. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to uni and I'm like, how am I going to survive? How am I going to maintain this scholarship that I have? But honestly, I am an A student now, you know, and I, I, I just feel like it's really God's grace. So I didn't personally have a hard time adjusting to the way they do things. I've had hard subject and stuff. But honestly, mm -hmm. if you just study, like if you study, do your own part and stuff like everything is gonna work again if you don't <laughs> you don't and it's really easy not to because um you're not even living at home your parents aren't even like no one is there no one is there to keep you accountable you, books. <laughs> you know it's literally you and your books you, mm -hmm. you you can literally live your bestest life and forget about school mm -hmm. if you want to but um really i wouldn't say i had a hard time so yeah but on to the next point is the difference in culture mm -hmm. did you experience a huge culture shock when you moved to south africa and stuff like that as compared to zimbabwe or it's quite similar um i think okay i don't think it was um a culture shock but i experienced i guess yes it is culture shock because in zimbabwe people speak english and or they speak shana and Dibele, but no one gets offended if you speak to them in english right but in South Africa, I don't know if there's like some, I don't know what happens, but I realize like if I go to like pick and pay and I speak to the lady at the toll in English, they yeah. get offended. And yeah, I don't know. Yeah, all that and stuff Yeah, like, that. like I've had people refuse to speak to me in English. I've had, um, yeah. And 
that was just very odd for me because I feel like dude you're in an area where you know that there's a university and they're like a whole lot of foreign people and not even that like south africa is such a big country and it has like how many official languages so you can't expect everyone to know how to speak your language i've actually experienced people who've refused to speak to me just because i've been speaking in english that's crazy refused is at school i'm at school and in in the shop in the shops it sounds like you've like a little bit been not by all people but you can be alienated sometimes because mm-hmm. of not being able to speak the language but for me i don't have that same experience glory be to god i'm in america they speak english yeah i, I could never go to a country where they don't speak english if i'm being honest really? majority english because when i moved to america i had a very hard time initially you know adjusting to life and everything now can you imagine also throwing in not being able to speak the language of the people you know when i look at them some of the chinese people the asian people in my school they can't speak english some of them and they have a really hard time in classes and everything they have a really hard time so how do they learn and up to now i really don't know because they really don't speak english i really i really don't know i so somehow they make it happen so i never had the issue of the language barrier the only thing was um the the accent so i sound different to them you know and uh you know people have a thing where some people are like oh that's cool that's interesting oh yeah we know you're foreign other people will want to tease you about it and say you know it's funny because you sound this way and i'm like yes i'm not from here you know but um because of american culture is heavily in our own society mm-hmm. i didn't find it too hard to relate to them and even with the accent it's just that i say dance we say dance we speak british english they dance. dance they say dance mm-hmm. you know i say class they say class stuff like that um i did find myself having to alter the way i speak for them to be able to hear me mm-hmm. so um they are very their r's are very prominent mm-hmm. i say here there but there you have to say here, here. there so they can hear the r you know but other than that i didn't have anything in terms of difference in culture as well um i think america is very culturally diverse so i think they i don't know how to it they, okay. they don't they don't really have culture, culture the way i know culture to be mm. you know here in south africa we have culture they, we have all different types of culture we have traditions and stuff like that america doesn't have a set culture there's so many different kinds of people some of them are true to their or their origins like where they're from and the culture they're of others are or a lot of them are very just 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 no real source of culture i have a question for you so i've heard like um the african americans treat africans differently in america is that is that like a thing it is a thing but i have not personally gone through it but um i have spoken to someone who has and he says and it's actually a two-sided thing it's not just one-sided i have africans said. undermine african americans african americans i don't know if it's undermine or alienate like mm. you're weird you're not one of us there we go it's mm. these two se- it's not just people as one mm. it's this separation oh, and a lot of africans um judge or look down on african americans because of their lack of african culture culture or you know what i mean so a lot of not a lot but some africans just believe that um you know you're not really african you don't count you're not and you know how Ameri- african americans love to claim africa, africa and stuff like that and so some africans are like no you you, you cannot claim whereas others are like hey man like you are from there oh, uh burner boy said that i was thinking you know? about the same thing <laughs> mama burner exactly. mama burner <laughs> Like, what you say you were before you were anything else you were, you were african, african you know first, which is true which is true you know? because they went there on ships and they didn't go there voluntary voluntarily yeah. like they were taken as slaves so if if my great 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 i don't know how many greats mm. grandparents are african or if i have african blood if i'm black yeah i am african i would say something that did help me 
being from South Africa as opposed to other African countries um, is, you know, we have white people here. We, we had apartheid here. We have, we have racism here. So for me, moving to America and um, seeing the things that happened in America in terms of how black people are treated or the racism, it wasn't a shock to me because I come from a racist place. I, I, some Africans have a hard time moving to America because they don't have the identity of a black person. You are African. Okay, and in being African, you are whatever tribe is in your country. That's as far as it goes for you. Whereas being from South Africa, I am my tribe. I am African, but I'm black because we have white people. We had the whole thing. Um, but some some Africans have a hard time when they do move because now they take on the identity of being a black person person and they now experience yeah, racism never experienced it before. in south africa we have a huge issue of xenophobia we had the xenophobic attacks people were being burned and killed simply for for being from another country and it really pains me because something that i think we need to understand in the world is if i am leaving my country to come to yours more often than not it's not for fun honestly it's oh not by gosh. choice it's yes. not because oh you know i just feel like i just feel like coming here it's no. because things are horrible things yeah. are bad where i'm coming from so i'm coming here to find something better something i'm trying to better my own future i'm not purposefully coming here to steal your job or to steal your women okay <laughs> or but still okay we don't want your man you guys don't even want your man so <laughs> But yeah, I've always actually said this. Yeah. South Africa, I feel, is the America of Africa. Oof. In terms of the, the immigrant the situation immig- and yes. stuff. Mm. South Africa, America, same WhatsApp group. I, I, I guess I do understand that if there is an influx of other people in your country, you do feel some type of way. Yeah. But unfortunately your country is one of the only countries in america that is stay i mean not in america in africa yeah. that is stable enough um for people to come and settle and be able to do things mm. i really don't think i would I like to settle in south africa because i don't think i'll ever feel welcome mm. you always have that thing at the back of your head where you're constantly being told you are a foreigner you are a great, great, great you are like you just won't feel and the thing i also realized is you can't even voice out how you feel because yeah. once you voice out how you feel and you make south africans seem like negative people you're quickly told then go back to your country and then True. you're like okay yeah. <laughs> go back to my country that hasn't had electricity for two months but okay <laughs> And have you been directly affected by xenophobia? Have you had an experience where people purposely and intentionally make you feel you are foreign? I've had people, not once, but like, I've been called a K-word twice by Caucasian men, Caucasian Afghana men, twice. Um, The one time the person actually attempted to run me over it was what oh yo like yes the one time that person literally attempted and the thing that affected me is like in the car was yes. his wife his kids wow. there were like three kids in the back yeah one was like a young girl there was like a boy and i'm like oh my gosh these children are being exposed to this from mm. a young age and it seems normal and that i remember that day it was a scene i don't know like people just didn't record or whatever because that would have made the papers yeah like it would yeah. and it wasn't just me it was like i was with like my i was with my ex-boyfriend i was with um and there were like other people and we were like crossing a road right yeah. and this guy like sped past right so we like quickly ran across the street and then you know like you wait by the island to wait for the other mm-hmm. cars he did a u-turn and sped Bed again while we were trying to cross and then he rolled down his window he said um where's your fat friend now bloody k-word who's the fat friend like later on when we were working we were like oh my gosh did he mean jacob zuma and then like my mind we're like and i'm like but i'm not even from here i didn't vote for him <laughs> this 
literally like you can't be my president. <laughs> he's, he's not my president. Yeah. Like yeah. And then the second time, these white boys. It's crazy. These white boys were we were walking, and it was pretty dark, um, on the street, and like one of them just said. Oh my gosh, I spy with my little eye. Okay. Like, mm-hmm. and I was just, you know, like when you're just like, really? I'm really just walking on the street. Like, wh- what did I do to deserve this? Yeah. So I've just, I've, like, I've ex- experienced extreme racism here. Okay, but I, I feel like there's worse kinds of racism. But, like, that's, I feel like. That's extreme, sis. I've never experienced that. Really? Never. Like, and I feel like the K word is the equivalent of the N word. We mm-hmm. call like nigga, mm-hmm. but we don't even call each other the K word. Mm-hmm. We don't call you like at least black people. We've you know my nigga, you know like yeah, we're cool yeah. with it. The K word nobody nobody uses it. Nobody uses it like that. Like I sure I don't even know how to pronounce it. <laughs> Wow. But yeah, that, th- those were my experiences. That's it for today, guys. I hope you liked this video and I hope you found it very informative. Please go check out Vangai's channel and subscribe as well. Yeah. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe to both, to both our, our channels. channels. <laughs> there we go. And guys, I will be back with more videos. If you want to see her again, comment down below. I, I will gladly come back. I had such a. <laughs> I, this is now a friendship. This is now a friendship. Yes. Like, yes. I so, agree. Yeah. Peace and love, guys. Hi. I love you guys. That's what I do. (laughs) That's so cute. (laughs)